Hi, it's Kevin Raber, and uh, we're back uh, at our studio in Indianapolis, Photo PXL Studios, and uh, we're going to be talking about paper or deciding on paper. You've learned a lot about printing so far, but you can print on many different surfaces, especially a paper. Substrates, different substrates. Okay, substrates. Let's, let's complicate it now, yeah. but it's paper. And uh, Dan has got a presentation he's going to talk about titled Deciding on Paper. And uh, I've done this because uh, papers have all these very interesting names and we all have our favorite papers. And then people, uh, when we're live at a trade show or virtually, they always say, what paper should I use? The beauty about inkjet printing is you have all this amazing choice. The agony about inkjet printing is you have all this amazing choice. I like to help people understand that by kind of making a decision tree of two or three things to kind of get you into the right type of paper. And the first thing is, are you a person that likes that traditional photographic look? Mm -hmm. uh, that could be darkroom or anything that has that rich D-Max, great color gamut. Or do you like a more painterly, illustrative, fine art look? People use the term fine art. Mm -hmm. Because those are the papers that use photo black ink, the photographic, and the cotton fiber, more illustrative papers use cotton fiber for it, and they use matte black ink. Matte black. For some people, it's going to be frame behind glass, doesn't matter. Uh, for others, especially fine art photographers, uh, I learned this from Michael Reichman. The sale of a print is not made behind a frame. The sale of the print is when it's handed to a prospective customer and they touch it and they hold it and they feel that sense of quality. Tactile. So that's another spec you have to consider. And then an OBA or OBA free optical brightening agent. For some people, this is very important it's OBA free. For others, less important. Just be informed about what those are. And then the surface type. You want something that's smooth, you want something that's mildly textured, you want something that's heavily textured. And there's some people out there that are doing canvas, and those are generally about matte surface, semi-gloss surfaces, or glossy surfaces. You roll them up and they, they don't wrinkle, so easy to transport if you're using them for any other reason. Well, if they're going to be uh, framed, they're going to be stretched, or they're going to be wrapped. There's, uh, canvas is a whole other thing, and maybe a whole other uh, discussion. Yeah, some other time. But, but when you're thinking, oh, what paper should I use? Are you a photographic person or a more painterly person? Do you like texture? Do you want it? And then you can kind of decide this is the direction I need to go. Uh, if we're talking about Epson papers, Epson media, because media would incorporate canvas and all these other things, there's three categories. The professional series, which are the everyday working things you'll see in photo stores as well as in retailers. Then to professional photographers, other creative professionals, our signature worthy line. Uh, this image here happens to be uh, captured by a person to my right, uh, your left over there. That's actually an iconic image from very iconic. one of the early yes. digital images. Yes. And it was actually the inspiration for the history feature in Photoshop that Mark Hamburg wrote. Right. And, uh, and if you look at that print today, on any of these signature worthy papers or legacy papers. It really holds up. I know early digital images, you can kind of look at them from that era and go, well, you know, let's uh, can we redo this. That one just uh, really holds. And then there's the legacy papers. This is the best of the best for those that are selling their works. Also collectors will specify these. Uh, what's special about them, they're all OBA free and they have the finest of coatings and they are all produced in Europe in the tradition of European handmade papers. So if you're looking at this slide, um, these are the signature worthy papers. And I kind of broke it down with the top row are the photographic papers, the ones that would use the photo black ink, or PK. And the bottom row are those that are gonna use the matte black ink, the more painterly papers. And they're listed here by the types of surfaces. Luster is Traditional, some people call it an orange peel. If you're of a certain age, you worked in the darkroom, it was E-surface, <laughs> RC paper, right? Uh, exhibition fiber paper, that was designed uh, to be like an air-dried black and white print. It was F-surface unferrotype. The F stood for ferrotyping, which gave you a high gloss. It was actually Ansel Adams, I believe, who first experimented with that, and that's the tradition of that. Double uh, weight dried mat. Right. Which is air dry, the, air dry, the typical F surface. And it's still often kind of cited as that's what great black and white photography is about. But keep in mind, uh, everything on that top row has an OBA. Understand what they are, then make the decision is that right or wrong for you. All of Ansel, well, I don't know about all of them, but most of Ansel Adams' prints have OBAs today. Yeah. So it's kind of like, whoa, well, do I want it, not want it? Then there's the metallic papers. These are Jeff's favorites. Yeah. <laughs> 
I actually, well, I enjoy the metallic paper. I can, you know, Jeff, Jeff might pick on me for him, but I've made some nice metallic prints. As I say, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> but again, F for, that's the old surfaces from the darkroom. F for glossy, E is uh, the orange peel, and F stood for ferrotype. And those are very high gloss papers. And then canvases, what we talked about earlier. But if you get into those cotton fiber papers, a smooth surface is hot pressed because paper is textured and heat was used in, in the old ways to get it smooth. And there's a hot press bright and a hot press natural. Natural does not have an OBA and the bright has an OBA. So that's what that means. So you can make the best decision for yourself. To be honest, the, the bright looks visibly a little bit whiter uh, when you compare the two. The natural looks a little bit down uh, in terms of the brightness. But depending upon the image, that actually can be an, uh, a plus. Yep, it, and exactly what's happening is ultraviolet light causes the OBAs to fluoresce slightly that makes the paper base white whiter, which can give the appearance that your print has a little bit more contrast. It doesn't, but it kind of looks that way. It can give the appearance you have a little bit more color saturation. It, it doesn't technically if you were to measure it, but visually, you know, and in the end it's about visual versus measurements are important, but people don't ask for specific chromaticity uh, measurements before they buy a print. And then these textured papers with a cold press. And then uh, uh, our old favorite, Velvet Fine Art, yeah. which has a subtle texture. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of understanding what do you like and then finding those two or three papers. And there's an easy way to do that. But with the legacy papers, that top row, these are the photographic papers, the new Barita 2 and uh, legacy Platine, often mispronounced in Indianapolis. Well, in these it models. might be, it's Platine. Platine. <laughs> Actually, it's one, that's one of my favorite printer, pay, pay papers right now. It's got a real nice texture to it. And uh, so while well, you've gone mad, I've gone platine. I've, uh, I love them all. Oh, but, anyway. but if we take a look at that bottom row, <clears throat> on the personal side, not being the Epson guy, I, oh, I never liked the matte papers. You know? There was always like, yeah, it's not like, yeah, it's not a photograph. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's this. Or, and also... The printers have improved so much, the papers have improved so much that uh, legacy fiber, which is a smooth surface, it's no longer that, oh, you know, it doesn't have the black, oh, it doesn't have the color. It's like really good. And for display purposes, uh, there's no reflections. And uh, you, you actually kind of fall into the picture versus trying to find the right angle to fall into the picture. And etching has uh, some texture and then the textured has more texture. texture, right? In the grand scheme of things, depending upon the size of the print, if you're going to print on a watercolor fine art paper, my preference is to actually have some darn texture to actually give it uh, uh, that Phew. fine art uh, watercolor look, which is why one of the reasons why I like the texture. As a photographer, I still like the Barita or the Exhibition Fiber. The Exhibition Fiber has been my favorite, but I'm getting. I'm leaning towards going Barita because it's no OBA. The Barita has been really popular for a long time. Our friend Michael used to print with it and he influenced a lot of other people. It's nice and smooth and... It's okay, we, we love, there's no right or wrong answers. And you can also kind of change your mind. And you can also say, yeah. well, I like photographic papers, but there's times when I like those kind of painterly, illustrative looks. And the best way to, to understand what you like because if you, try, you, you just can't try every paper that's on the market. It'll make you crazy. You want to find those two, three, four papers that really make the most sense and then test them and then test them by getting a sample pack. It's an inexpensive way to try out different papers uh, so that you're not spending a lot of money and uh, using up a lot of space. And these are the signature worthy and uh, this is legacy and that's letter size. It's a great way to find what are those two or three papers based on the types of images as a photographer you are to find those those papers that are right for you. You know, in the end, it's about the prints. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do is to create an array of my images plus some uh, example uh, color strips and stuff, uh, Bill's balls, uh, which we always laugh about. Uh, but I, it, somehow or another, I ended up with this image of Dano. Oh. Um, yeah, we just shot that a couple days ago, right? <laughs> Back in the olden days, or in the color lab business, uh, they used to call uh, the people shots Shirley's. And that's what they would align their color analyzers with and everything. Because at Eastman Kodak Company, 
the first person who posed and sat there all day with a flash going off, her name was Shirley. Ah, so that another Shirley with, with uh, I think that's, that's you. Oh my heavens. And then there's a Kevin one. I don't know if that would be so accurate in color, but uh, there you go. Um, there is stories behind uh, all these, the bill balls, um, which was very interesting. Our friend Bill Atkinson made them and it was basically you know, going from white to the darkest colors in certain areas, making sure they transition. But the properly. advantage of creating an array of your own images is basically it allows you to see what your images look like and you can kind of compare and contrast. Um, I have kind of settled on, for the watercolor, uh, the textured. That's very nice, it's a cactus. And um, so you, you went with the textured version. That's, that has a nice feel to so it. So a little a point of order on the terms. Uh -huh. A watercolor paper doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a term people use. Yeah. Because it's rough and right. that's what the watercolor paper is. But generally this is a cotton fiber paper. Yes. Uh, could you put watercolor on it? Maybe, yeah. but you know, don't know. But it has it's in that watercolor family. And a lot of people thought of watercolors primarily as a textured service. Mm -hmm. So in the end, what I think we, we should recommend as a group here is do what uh, Jeff has done. I've done the same thing. Get both sample packs, get a couple of them so you can try them out. There's uh, three sheets for, uh, at least in the, the legacy sample pack, there's three sheets of every surface. Mm -hmm. And make prints of the different things that you do on them. And then you have them and you can reference back to them. I have them in, uh, I put them back in the acetate sleeve with the label on them so I can actually tell what they are. But uh, it does allow you to take a look at what certain images look like on different surface papers and uh, make a wise choice. And um, I print with the Burita here. With, uh, my newfound like is the Platine. Burita? Burita or Burita? Yes, uh, so the correct pronunciation, I'm gonna be officially, is Burita. So it's Burita. The way you pronounce it, is, I believe, is a water purification product. <laughs> in Indi it, we're Indianapolis, we, <laughs> what can you say? Well, in any case, you've seen enough in regards to how to decide to get some paper. We'll be back and we're gonna take a look at a number of different images on different papers. I wanna thank Dano and Jeff, especially for the presentation. Dano, it was very good. And um, Jeff, thank you for the samples. We'll see you all on the next video.